Vice President Kamala Harris has again compared the end of Roe v. Wade to one of the darkest chapters in the nation's history, slavery. That our country has a history of claiming ownership over human bodies. And today, extremist so-called leaders are criminalizing doctors and punishing women for making health care decisions for themselves, personal decisions. Our own Peter Ducey pressed White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre on whether the president agrees with the vice president's remarks. But did he get an answer? Does the president agree with her that the recent Supreme Court decision on abortion access is similar to slavery? I have not seen her comments. We know at NAACP that our country has a history of claiming ownership over human bodies. And today, extremist so-called leaders are criminalizing doctors and punishing women from making health care decisions for themselves. Well, she is correct. Today's decisions are criminalizing doctors um, and essentially taking the rights away from uh, women. So the president but agrees. I will say uh, that second part of what you just said, uh, the vice president is actually right. I mean, he read her the direct quote, Harris. You have to have an answer on that. She, she's done this before. I haven't seen the president's speech. That's your job is to watch the president and the vice president's speech. Yeah, but we have the words for you. Yeah. You, you don't right. have to see it. Here's the verbatim. Here's, here are the words for it. Look, um, I say this often. To be ready for that job, to, to be really, really pressed in that press corps is difficult. And, and you're starting to see now a drumbeat, not just from Peter Ducey, but when... The president and the vice president are surrounded by reporters. You can't ignore things like inflation. So I don't feel that she's ready for the moment. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be unkind about that. She just is not. I'm sure she's very nice. And, and that's all great. And she is making history and diversity lanes. And, and that's what she talked about first. Okay. But what we need in this country is somebody who can talk brass tacks without the binder and look up and give it straight. And you know with somebody like Peter, Peter Ducey sitting there, you've got to come ready. Exactly. That's exactly right. And as Kamala Harris Kennedy makes these comparisons, she's done it twice. Um, you look at the CNN headline that just popped out at me last night. CNN, voters of color are backing the GOP at historic levels. And it goes on to explain the historic margin um, that the House election this century, the, the closest was 40 points. Republicans are currently 10 points better than their best year of 2004. Oh, yes. It's, I mean, it's a huge gain. It's a huge gain. And, you know, and, and these are also individuals that uh, vote based on their morals and their conscience. And, you know, the vice president may not be representing them, especially as such an unserious person. She has not internalized what slavery means in this country and what that institution really did to people and the, the short lives that slaves lived and the disease and the contagion and the misery and the murder and the suffering. You know, that the, the fact that, that she lessens that institution to score a political point is so deeply affected while also not acknowledging the seriousness of abortion and what that means, regardless of how she feels that should be carried out and whether or not it's a personal decision between a woman and her doctor. And if it's coming down to the question of freedom, that is not a settled question. You know, that that is the crux mm. of the issue right now is people feel that, you know, a woman has the freedom to choose and it is just her decision. There are other people who say, no, you are infringing on the freedom of an unborn child. Yeah. So that it, it, it's not slavery and it's not settled. Right, exactly. States will decide. Brian, meanwhile, Kamala is having a, a hemorrhaging in her office. She's lost 15 staffers. Yeah. We'll put up their pictures. Uh, and what was interesting, Washington Examiner did an analysis of the Biden White House writ large. And what they found is that while Biden has lost 15% of his staff in the first year, get this. Obama lost 4%, wow. Trump lost 1%, and I thought Trump was the big, mean, bad boss that lost all his yeah, staff. Yeah, with all the turnover and chaos. Yeah, right? it's actually Kamala who's losing the staff in Biden. Wow. You know, I, I teach at a college, and I tell my students, when you go to a job, especially early in your career, take a job where you can learn, where you can grow, where you're around the best people. That's much more important than what you get paid. I look at what's going on with her staff and the exodus, and I see a bunch of people who are saying, 
this is not the place where I'm going to get better. This is not the place where I'm going to make a contribution, mm. where I'm going to make a difference, and I'm out of here. She has failed to build a team because she doesn't understand fundamentally what this job is. And you see her flailing about from issue to issue. Instead of finding a place where she can get traction, she just sticks with the word salad. And as a result, the team says, stay here for what? so I can get worse in my job, so I can not find a path, go someplace where you can be around people who are better. Can I point something out if we all just look at the screen? So uh, up and down, Sarah Gouda and Megan Groob, deputy director of speech writing, director of speech writing. Mm. I mean, those have to be the most like frustrated people on the planet. Right. Kate <laughs> Childs Graham, chief speechwriter, she had a lot of help behind the scenes yes, and has did. had so so little success. So little success. And what's interesting, I, Jackie, it just occurred to me, like these men and women on the screen, if you think Kamala is the successor to Biden, don't you want to be next to her? Because maybe you'll be the president's speechwriter one day. Maybe you'll be the president's press mm. secretary if she's the successor. I think you're right. And I think if she was a strong leader and somebody who could step up to the plate, they would continue to want to be on her team. But I think everybody around her is realizing she had a tremendous opportunity here mm. as the first female vice president. And she has let women women down in general, not just women of color. Somebody, I looked at her and said, wow, you could just take this ball and run with it. Whatever he gives you to do, I don't care if it's the worst job in the history of jobs, take it and do a good job. And she just dropped the ball on the border, dropped the ball on everything else. Honestly, she's so scared to get in the fray. She just kind of hangs back aside for the low hanging fruit here uh, with Roe v. Wade. And so I, I just think that she took this opportunity and completely squandered it. She cannot be on a 2024 ticket if he doesn't run and I know she and Governor Newsom trying to raise some money and trying to do some priming for that um, but she just has not proven herself well to run that ball in the end zone to your point you got to pick it up first yeah. I mean the football's like deflated on the 50 yard line at this point. I mean you wouldn't <laughs> only be writing speeches for the next president you'd be writing speeches for the first female right. president right. right I mean that is history. historic and, and if you think that is going to happen you better believe you are going to dig in you're going to learn and you're going to be a part of the so team true. Uh, that, that takes her into the end zone. Right. Said they're like moving on yep. out of Kamala's office. Right. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.